In closing, I want to share with you a story out of uh, a book that I have called Civil, Civil War Treasures. I'm kind of a Civil War buff myself. But this is called Crocker's Errand of Mercy. Listen to the story. Lieutenant Lum, uh, Lemuel Crocker of the Union Army, after the Battle of Shepherdstown, was aroused to sense of responsibility to the wounded and dead who were left on the battlefield on the other side of the Potomac River. I know that Linda knows where Shepherdstown is. The Confederacy was on the Virginia side and the Union forces on the Maryland side. He asked his superiors if he could have permission to go over to the other side where the Confederacy had control and care for those who had been left behind, the wounded and the, and the dead. He had, gone, had to go all the way to General Fitzjohn Porter, the Corps cam commander. His request was denied because there was not to be any communication with the enemy. War was war, and there was no time of occasion for sentiment or sympathy. But Crocker was not easily discouraged from his errand of mercy. Sounds like a few people in our church. So he disregarded his orders and went with sword and pistol over to the enemy side. Facing a full corps of Confederate soldiers, he went ashore on his mission of mercy to rescue those who were left behind. It would have been better if he left his weapons on the other side. His chances of having more friendly reception would have increased. He found the bodies of four of his companions badly wounded but still alive. He began to carry each one down to the riverbank. The general, finding out that Crocker was missing from the camp, sent an order over to him to tell him to cease his activity immediately and return to camp or they would start shelling him with the cannons. His reply was, shell and be blank. Nothing was going to stop him to do the right thing. No matter what the consequences were, he was on a man on a mission. And when he had dispatched the orderly, he continued his work. But as he was going from one of the last wounded, he was stopped by the Confederate general and his entourage. The general was surprised and said that there was no truce flag going on. And what did he think he was doing? Crocker explained what he was doing. He told the general that he was disobeying his corps commander's orders to rescue these wounded. He said that the dead and the wounded of the regiment that fought on that ground yesterday were the blood of Philadelphia's citizens. And regardless of the laws of war and the commands of his superiors, he was of opinion that humanity and decency demanded that they be properly cared for, which no one else attempting, he had determined to risk the consequences and discharge the duty himself. My friends, oftentimes we have a higher commander, don't we? The general was so impressed with his sincerity and earnestness, he asked Crocker how long he had been in the service. Crocker answered, 20 days. The general said, I thought so. This man has not been hardened by war. His heart is still tender toward his fellow men. The enemy general was so impressed that with this man that he ordered a detachment of his own cavalry to guard him until his task was complete and gave him a boat to take them all back across. As soon as he was back and his mission complete, he had rescued several dozen men but his corps commander sent for him. The general was so angry at the total disregard for orders by this man that he let him know in colorful language all the violations that were written up against him. Then after a long silence, the general considered his inexperience, unquestionable courage, and good intentions and thought that the reprimand was sufficient punishment. He was fully restored back to his duty. There are many in this church who I know that have a heart for those who are in need. That is a heart after God's own heart. And God is looking for men and women who have a heart after his, that no matter the consequences, they follow a higher command to do what God would do. Where do you find such a person? Most anywhere in the most unlikely places. 
God has his people 